Hey guys, Stefan Fischer here from Olaf Road. Thank you very much for joining me today. In today's video, I will give you an overview of the Bluetti EB150, uh, 1500 watt hour portable lithium ion solar power bank. I will give you a few examples what it can be used for. I will extensively test it and I will give you my take whether it's worth spending $1,700 on this portable lithium ion power bank. So stay tuned and keep watching. This walkthrough slash review is a little bit unusual because it came actually from an unsolicited email. Every week I receive several emails from all sorts of companies to review their products. Quite often they are from China that ranges from torches to LED light bars to fridges to all sort of stuff but to be honest that usually goes straight into the bin because I'm not that interested reviewing stuff or looking at stuff which I don't actually use. However several weeks ago one email caught my attention and that was for the Bluetti EB150. I was always intrigued how these mobile life po 4 power banks would work, how good the quality is and when Bluetti asked me to review that unit, I said, yeah, no problem. So I emailed them back and to be honest, I forgot about it. But three weeks later, then the unit actually turned up. I have been testing the unit now for several days. The only conditions I really have with reviewing the unit is to do it reasonably fast. They didn't want me to do a one year review. So this is not one of my usual reviews because as you know, I would use that for probably a year before I review it. So this will be more of a walkthrough and I tell you about all the tests I have put the unit through over the past few days. I noticed that a lot of my viewers are actually not subscribers. I would really appreciate if you could hit the subscribe button, hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. It would mean a lot to me. Thanks. The Bluetti EB150 is a 101 amp hour slash 1500 watt hour portable solar battery bank with a host of features. The unit weighs 16.7 kg and comes in what appears to be a good quality aluminium enclosure with the front and rear out of ABS plastic. The manufacturing tolerances appear to be very good and nothing seems to be haphazardly or cheaply made. On the front the unit has a DC7909 8mm barrel charge plug for solar and 220 volt charging. We also have a regulated 12 volt cigarette lighter socket which delivers a constant of 13.6 volt. One 45 watt USB-C fast charging plug and four full size 5 watt USB sockets which charge up to 3 amp per pair. As well as the unit's power on button and the DC and AC on button and the LED display. In the rear of the unit we have the two AC 220 volt plugs of the pure sine wave 1000 watt inverter which are rated to 1000 watt continuously and have a 1200 watt load burst limit for one second. Above the AC plugs we have the rear fan which helps cooling down the unit. The Bluetti EB150 is registered with the electrical equipment safety system and therefore certified to be sold in Australia. The EB150 uses lithium nickel manganese cobalt oxide cells, in short often called lithium ion or NMC. NMC is the preferred chemistry for electrical vehicles like the Tesla, but it's also used in power tools and many other mobile devices as it has a higher energy density and provides more watt hours per kilogram. It also allows higher current charge and discharge. However, NMC has a shorter lifespan than LifePO4 and in regards to safety, NMC sits between LifePO4 and NCM and LCO. NMC cells will create fire and explode when punctured or if they have a thermal runaway. In saying that, I'm sure you have a few devices at home with lithium ion cells and they probably haven't gone up in fire. Also keep in mind the unit has all safety certifications in Australia. 
They included 220 volt charger, charges a unit with around 212 watt, which means it takes around 8 hours to charge the device fully at home. This sounds quite long, but my research says that the EB150 has one of the faster AC chargers in this market segment. The charger does have an internal fan that is running when charging. I have to say it is surprisingly loud and it's not something you want to have charging in your bedroom. Let me quickly give you a sound bite of the charger. I don't think that will be an issue for most people and it certainly isn't for me unless you really would have to charge a unit in your bedroom. The unit also comes with an MC4 to 8mm adapter cable for solar charging, however I converted the MC4 to an Anderson plug. The retail price of the unit is $1699, however Bluetti gave me a $100 discount code for my viewers, so check the description and save yourself $100 if you would like to purchase the unit. The EB150 also comes with two years warranty and can be returned to an Australian warehouse. The operating temperature of the unit is from 0 degrees to 40 degrees. It is Australian winter here, so I had no chance to test how the unit operates uh, above 40 degrees, but that is something to keep in mind. The unit also has a low temperature charge protection, which I think is important and I think a lot of the units don't have. I won't bore you with the full details of every test I did, but if you are interested in that, please let me know in the comment section and maybe I make a separate video and show you all the individual tests. I pretty much tested everything beside the low temperature charge protection and how the unit operates above 40 degrees. To see the overall capacity of the EB150, I did several tests with various discharge rates. In one test I used a hairdryer, which used around 860 watt, and the EB150 shut down after around 87 minutes. So my unit could provide around 83% of the advertised 150 watt hours of power, which is around 1245 watt hours or 81 amp hours. The unit had no problem providing around 900 watt continuously and did provide 1200 watt for a second before shutting down and coming up with the error code E013 overload protection of inverter when I used my heat gun on the hot setting. I also wanted to see what temperatures the unit reaches when it runs at 85-90% capacity. So the unit is a little bit warmer, about 25 degrees. 18 at the front. 24. Yeah, that is absolutely nothing to be concerned about though. Charlie, one of our local kookaburras, was also quite interested about all the testing going on. I charged and run many different devices like laptops, iPads, phones, camera gear, heaters, power tool chargers, uh, food dehydrators and fridges. And I can say that I'm very confident that the unit will run everything up to a limit of 1000 watt. That is for AC and DC combined. This is not high enough to run high power devices like coffee machines or induction cooking plates, but it should be sufficient for most campers running their lights, fridges and charge all their digital devices and cameras. When Will Prowse tested the EB150 in 2019, he noted quite a discrepancy between the AC wattage shown on the display and the actual output on a wattmeter. Bluetti has fixed it as my display correlated with a wattmeter on the AC plug and the difference was only a few watts. In Will Prowse's video, the front 12 volt cigarette lighter also only provided a regulated 12.3 volt, which is very low. However, this has also been addressed as I had a constant output of 13.6 volt, which will be no issue. One other thing I wanted to test is how well this EB150 would work as a power backup device at home, for example, in case of a power outage. So I uh, rigged an extension cable from our fridge and will now plug that into the unit and then let's have a look how long I approximately could run the fridge freezer. It's actually a fridge freezer combination on this unit. So I switch the AC on at the moment. The fridge works, the light is on, but at the moment 
it's drawing no power. Now it's coming on. And we're using around 327 watts for a big fridge freezer combination. So in case of a power outage and obviously depending on the outside temperature and how often I open the fridge and freezer, I reckon I can run that unit for many hours on the EB150. Somewhere behind the DC7909 connector in the front sits a built-in 60 volt 500 watt MPPT solar controller which allows you to fully recharge the unit in around 3 hours if you have 500 watt of solar panels. So that's a possibly a 300 watt solar panel but at the moment it is winter that's not a very good angle it is a little bit hazy so I won't get that much out of it charging now with 130 watt but yeah under full sun that would be far more i unfortunately don't have 500 watt of solar panels so can't really test it however i have seen several tests online and the mppt solar uh, controller seems to be very good and you can charge with 500 watt let's now have a look what i think could be improved on the unit the LCD display is fairly simple, however it gives you the most important information you need, but one thing lacking is a percentage uh, state of charge. You only have five bars which give you a rough idea what state of charge the battery is in, but I think a percentage there would be great to have. All the charging is happening via DC7909 8mm barrel connector and that is rare as hen's teeth. So um, I would wish that they have a bit more common charging uh, plug, for example, an Anderson plug. If you ever lose a solar charging cable or the regular charging cable, that is not something you can easily replace. You will need to go through Blue Eddy to get a replacement cable. It does not really come with a 12 volt charging option. So you can't have it in the car while you're driving, plug it into a cigarette lighter port or even USB port and charge it with that. Obviously USB and even USB-C would be fairly slow anyway. Nevertheless, I would like to have an option to charge it while driving in the car. Australia is big on Anderson plugs and what I'm really missing is an Anderson plug on that unit. Uh, for output and probably also for input, it would be a great way to charge a unit. So that is a suggestion I would make Anderson plug for the Australian unit. One small thing to consider is that all the DC stuff is at the front and the AC plugs are at the rear of the unit. So that, I guess, limits you a little bit where you put the unit. If you have, for example, a camper trailer or an RV and you want to stack it away into a shelf, just keep in mind you will need room at the back for the 220 volt output. I personally would have liked to see the two 220 volt uh, sockets at the front and not at the rear. One other improvement I would also make is to make that unit IP67. Um, at the moment it's only I think IP21, so really you can't leave it out in the rain. They also say don't leave it in the sun, which makes sense, but you definitely do not want to leave it in the rain. So I think it would be nice if you could actually cover the plugs and uh, if the casing could be IP67. So who is that unit for? I think it's a great home power backup device. For example, if we had a power outage for a few hours, I will have no issues running my fridge with it or keep my internet running, running a TV. Um, so everything really up to a thousand watt. If you're a casual camper or you have two uh, cars and you're not sure which car you take, you don't want to have a live PO4 uh, battery in each car. This is definitely a great solution because it's easy to carry. You have most features you need. You have an inverter, you have an MPPT solar controller. So it is really a multifunctional power device. And anywhere where portability is important, I think that is great. I mean, one of the uses why I probably will put it in the camper trailer, for example, at winter, because I think it would be great to run electric blankets if you need so. And my wife uh, is not the biggest winter camper, but the promise of an electric blanket in her sleeping bag uh, somehow makes convincing much, much easier. So 
I can take that out of the camper trailer. You can place it in your tent. You, uh, I could place it uh, under my stretcher. And then it can easy power two electric blankets for the whole night. If you, for example, need to sleep with a CPAP machine, these would be perfect to power that CPAP machine easily for a night. I mean, always make sure, obviously, how much wattage you use. But from my research, these should easy do the job. So what is my verdict after one week of using the unit? While $1,900, including GST, is a lot of money, you need to take into consideration what you actually get for it. If we break it down, the $1,900 buy you a 100-hour lithium-ion battery with a BMS and low-temp charge protection, a 1,000-watt pure SIN wave inverter, a 500-watt 60-volt MPPT solar controller, a 200-watt 220 volt AC charger, eight outlets, among them a cigarette lighter socket, four regular USB and one 45 watt USB-C socket and two AC sockets. An LED display and that all is packaged in a solid, easy to carry enclosure. I actually think that's pretty good value for money. Keep in mind I haven't used the unit for long, but given what I know at the moment, if I was in the market for one of the units, I definitely would consider it and probably pay the money for this unit. Thanks a lot for watching. I hope you enjoyed this overview and got something out of it. If you can, please don't forget to like, share, subscribe and maybe even consider heading over to Patreon, become one of my Patreon supporters and with the equivalent of a cup of coffee or two per month, you can help me make these videos. You will also get early access to all of my videos and you can ask me direct questions via the Patreon platform. Bluetti also was kind enough to provide me an affiliate link. That means if you intend to purchase the unit and you do it through that link, I will receive a little kickback. They also offered me a $100 discount coupon for my viewers. So check out the code in the description.